What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Behind the Cork. I'm your host, Eric Rocha. My guest today is none other than Mitchell Verzi. You can find Mitchell on Twitter at Verzi Triplets. Uh, Verzi, V-I-R-Z-I. He's one of the famous triplets. They were on uh, America's Got Talent. They were on The Gong Show. They are always on my mind. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. I like Mitchell. Mitchell's a, a really good dude. I've been friends with him for a while. One thing about the Verzies, man, all of them, all of them have gotten on my fucking nerves, but they are always the guys that are there for you. All of them. So, good friends in comedy. So something interesting happened. I went to a Yankees game with my family, my uncle and my aunt came down from Colorado with my mother, so I got to play tour guide for them. Anyways, uh, we're at the game, and everybody's cheering. There's a lot of shit talking going on. Uh, Dodgers fans fucking hate us. Whatever, I fucking hate them too. It's it's a good thing. Like, I, I respect the Dodgers because you go to Anaheim, and you do that Let's Go Yankees chant, and there's so many fucking Yankee fans in in Anaheim, that the Let's Go Yankees, that overpowers the Angels chant. Not so at Dodger Stadium. You do that chant, and uh, they'll, they'll fucking hand you your ass. They don't care. They're Dodger fans. So, naturally, I didn't give a fuck. I'm going to root for my Yankees. I don't give a shit. Fucking Dodgers. They wrong in Brooklyn anyways. What's it matter? So... I'm, I'm trying not to get so upset about this. They're cheering in my face. They're pointing and shit at me. Some stuff was like thrown at me. Whatever. Not a big deal. Uh, it's, it's not like it was like terrible. It's just, you know, stupid shit like that. We hit a fucking grand slam. It's the first time I've ever seen this. But I'm, I'm really happy that it happened at Dodger Stadium. And I stand up and I'm cheering. I'm loving it. I sit down and some fucking cunt... Kicks me in the back of the head. Over the line! Am I the only one around here who gives a shit about the rules? Boop. And then she puts her foot so that when I sit down, it's just it's 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 in my way. And then I, I look back at her and she goes, Oh, I'm sorry, is that my foot? And it's it's I look at the dude next to her and he's like, <laughs> and so I, I can't do anything. I can't fucking do anything. What am I gonna do? Hit a woman? I wanted to throw her off the top deck, which is where we were, and it was still expensive. Right after that, we hit another home run, and I turn around, and, you know, I cheer for my team, but then I turn around, and I go, watch your fucking foot. Ooh, that one hurt. And then we, we, just, we hit a couple of home runs, and I just kept talking shit to her, and she's looking at me like I'm rude. It's like, fuck you, lady, at least I used my words. Could you imagine if I kicked some guy in the back of the fucking head? He'd hand me my foot, and rightfully so. It's just, it's amazing to me. Women shouldn't be allowed to fucking hit men. When did that become a thing? Don't put your fucking hands on me. I don't care if you have tits or not. You, I know guys with tits. They don't fucking put their hands on me. Family had a good time, though, I think. I don't know. My uncle ordered chicken wings at a sushi place. Isn't that weird? I don't know no better. So let's blame the weather. Cause I got no care. When I hit my crew. Cause I got no care when I hit my crew. Not having them here? Uh, not really, no. Not in a performance aspect? No. Well, it's not weird because it's you. Like, we're friends. So it's like, if it was like some random person that I didn't know that wanted to... Like a real show. Yeah, like a real show. Like one that actually gets viewers and listeners and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, that would be very odd because it's like, oh, you just want like a generic white guy. Were any of them shocked I, I wanted you solo? 
Um, no, because I think they expected them to get themselves get interviewed afterwards. So I think they were waiting for it. It's like, oh, well, Rocho will come around. He'll he'll ask us next. That that's hilarious. I mean, you know how they are. Is it is it hard being a triplet act? I mean, honestly, because you've done it by yourself. Yep. Um, I, are you the only one of them that's that's of the Versi triplets that has done stand up by yourself solo? We had a little. F- when we were on Kill Tony as like regulars, uh, there was a phase where Red Band wanted us all to do a set individually. So, uh, Alex and Sean didn't do as well. They just, I don't think they were as comfortable. Whereas, like, eh, I'm just like, yeah, hey, I'll do jokes. I went first, and then they went the week after and the week after. So, they had two and three weeks to prepare. And I don't remember it going very well. <laughs> really? Oh, yeah. But it was also like, I don't know, I had a better, better feel for it. You know, just like used old jokes that I already had from when I did it. That's my question. So what was your experience um, with, with stand-up? It Not was, as a triplet act. Um, I mean, it was different. It was kind of cool because it was like, oh, you're on your own. It, it like reminded you like why it's fun and why it's, um, why you do it initially. Now it seems like there's kind of like more pressure where it's like, because there's three of us, we like, there's an expectation of like, oh, you have to be funny because people are looking at you because it's like no matter what we do at least on stage it's like oh what the what the fuck is that like there's three people on stage so from that aspect i i liked the fact that when we were when i was just doing it myself it was like oh you could just bomb and then people will forget about you it was amazing you can just go into the darkness and no one cares you're just another you know dust in the wind (laughs) but like when we started out and like doing it as a triple act if we did bad, it was like, it took us years to get that like sour taste out of people's mouth. If you see three people bomb at once, you're like, oh, wow, they suck. You've said it You've said it before where it's like, uh, you guys are like a band, and if one of you's out of rhythm, it's like, oh, boy, this just like, it's awful. It's, yeah. You <laughs> can be, it has the potential to be. You but, can have the greatest set of the night, but yeah. if your brothers fuck it up, then... <laughs> yeah. It doesn't matter. I mean, and, and and that's the other thing is like managing three different egos. I mean, you know us pretty well. Like Alex tends to be, Alex tends to be a little more, uh, not arrogant, but he's definitely more like pompous, I guess. Sean is a little more reserved to himself. I wouldn't, I mean, I guess I'm like kind of in between somewhere. But it's like, you know, I. it's like there's days where I I'll fuck it up. Like there's days where I've been hung over and like, even if it's just like doing a flapper show, right? There was one day we did a flapper show. It was like five minutes in the Yuhu room. Just like it didn't mean anything, but I was hung over from the night before, or I guess like the whole weekend before, and I like threw up what, right before the set. I just threw up, and I wasn't on my game, and I completely fucked it up. So it's like you're dealing with like, it's not like your own self. You can't just go into that recital mode or like the teleprompter mode that like if you're an individual, you just know your jokes inside and out. It's like you can just kind of read them off. So, for my listeners, who is Jack Valentine? <laughs> that was a terrible uh, character I tried doing uh, back. It was like a lady. It was like a shitty, like ladies' man character. I did a. Uh, of course, we were doing improv at the time, so that's where it came from. It was a uh, <laughs> the the one man. Sh- I did a one man show, which I'm not happy about. Um, uh, called Jack Valentine seduces you, and it was essentially like a. <laughs> It was a one man uh, show I did as like this like ladies man, like <laughs> dude. It was bad. Um, How long ago was this? Like a week ago? No, no, no. This was <laughs> dude. We were still less than a year into comedy. This was like years ago. Okay, we were. I, I don't think. I don't even think. I think I just graduated college. Oh, I think wow. I just finished. Yeah, we were. We were young. Um, which was right after the Versi Triples Variety Show, which is <laughs> its own different thing. But um, it's a Jake Cannon favorite. Yes, Comedian yes, Jake he, Cannon favorite. He loves it. Yeah, it was us doing a Vegas style show where we do like show stopping numbers and like okay, you t- know. T- tell me about Jack Valentine though. Um, that uh, it was like the the whole idea was like it was like a shitty like ladies man. Like imagine like an eighties like. Uh, radio show where it's like all right you're calling in oh hey this is uh you know jazzy j offering you uh lady advice or love advice and it was like supposed to be that but it was just like i don't know i had a lot of like random jokes that i had written that i just i couldn't do as myself there was no way i can get away with it so they were just like all right i had like 
it ended up being like 35 minutes long. Which, by the way, my parents sat in the front row of a one-man show. And I kept, I broke character the entire time because my dad was there looking at me like, dude, what are you, what are you doing? Like, <laughs> you have a college degree. Why are you doing this one-man show? And uh, by the way, I did it in a, um, I had a red uh, shirt with an all-white suit that I put over. And the suit did not fit, by the way. It, it sounds was about, like a knockoff of the ladies, man. It kind of was. Yeah, it kind of was. Um, and by the way, this suit was uh, about three sizes too large. Uh, so I just look like a baggy, like little baby pimp <laughs> trying to give like jokes. And dude, the worst part about it was my friend was dating a model at the time. Who's like, a, she's a big model now, like verified on Instagram, like does huge campaigns. And she was in the audience, and I just like it was. It did not go well. And like the one guy, like I had a buddy from high school, or no, he wasn't even a buddy. It was like a guy that I always thought I was better than in high school. We were on the same football team, but the egos kind of clashed. He came, and it was just like <laughs> so weird. And I'm glad it's. Uh, I'm glad there's no video of it. I have the only video of it, and uh, I will never release it. Where is it? Uh, <laughs> on my computer. Okay. Yeah. Maybe one day I'll show you. I don't, have you you've never seen it. Have you? I've never even... <laughs> I, I've heard of Jack Valentine, but... Dude, that's like... Oh, man. It's like when you... And it's like it wasn't even that... It wasn't even like a bomb. Like, the jokes the jokes still hit. Like, the jokes were still there. Like, I've pulled some of the jokes from that show in, like, random riffs that we've had. You know? Um, but as a, as a whole, as a, co- as a show, if you were to, you know, judge it, you would be like, yuck. It would be like, dude, when you have those just terrible bombs that you just hate reliving in your head, it would be like something like that where it's like, oh, I just don't want to re- – you've repressed it so long. You've gotten so much better since then, and it's like, I just don't want to look back at it. I just imagine it's like a really bad, long sketch. It was. It was It was literally like that. Dude, there was one point where I, uh, <laughs> I asked a – I tried to riff a song. I tried to do like musical improv in <laughs> – in the show, and I invited a girl on stage who I, I knew. It was a uh, large black lady who I'm great friends with. I did improv with her, and I tried to riff a song about her, and just like I tried rhyming, like I'm like uh, you know, I think I tried rhyming like Willie with like silly. It was just dude, it was bad. <laughs> yeah, it was rough. Um, so. Where did the idea for triplets came in? Now, this is where it's going to be interesting. Sure. Is who came up well, with the idea that we should be, we, well, we should all do this together? Well, our timeline, I guess. Uh, we did the variety show, and then I did that Jack Valentine after yeah. that. So, for the variety it's show. like when Mick Jagger left the Rolling Stones. And <laughs> yeah, they tried to do it on their own. Uh, <laughs> um. Joey Wrench had the idea. Who's Joey's a comic? Mm-hmm. Uh, love him. We did improv with him, and I don't like Joey and me were the, we always open mic together. Even when I was doing it by myself, I don't. I met Joey. I think yeah, I met Joey in improv one. So we did improv at Second City. I think I was twenty when I started, um, and I did. That's when I started doing whatever. Started trying stand up at open mics in college, and then Joey and I. Anytime I'd be back in L.A., Joey and I would go to stand up. Um, just do like the Ha Ha Cafe when that was still open. Do the one where they just brought like, it was yeah, because like, you're you're from Simi Valley. Yeah, yeah, I'm from I'm raised. from from these like hills. right outside Los Angeles. Yeah, like thirty minutes outside. Um, so then Joey's like, "Why don't you guys do it together?" Because we were we were all going through improv at that point. So he's like, "Yeah, why don't you guys just do it together? We're already doing improv together. Why don't you guys just do stand up with them?" And then we tried that out, but it was more like a uh, the initial initially when we did stand up, it was to get material so that we could do the variety show. So it was like, all right, which was great because there was, we kind of played characters. We played almost like it was more, I guess, vaudevillian where it was like over the top, which I'm sure, (laughs) but that also like, I don't know. It ended up working out because like the couple jokes that we did, we played so stupid that it ended up working out for people that had never seen us before, at least initially. That's how we kind of got like grabbed on Kill Tony initially. Like Tony saw us and liked us as like at least weird characters and brought us on that show, <clears throat> on his show. And then, you know, we had some colossal bombs, <laughs> as you do on Kill Tony. Uh, and then 
took a big break and then like like all right we gotta figure ourselves out because we we're getting way too much attention early that we didn't deserve okay yeah attention or was it, it was, envy was it hate both all, all of the above so like people didn't like you guys at all i think initially but i mean we weren't being ourselves that was the thing do we i mean i don't know if you were ever at the point where we did this is like right in the beginning we would each wear a different colored v-neck i wore uh, yeah you didn't know that oh dude yeah so we, when we started it was like i wore a green v-neck sean wore a red one and alex wore a blue one which glad you didn't see that because I, I mean we met when the fourth wall first opened up so i was gonna say i don't remember i don't remember meeting you guys um yeah we were like we were yeah was, we, was that the fourth wall no, I don't think you were hosting. I think Joe was still hosting. Joe Menente was still hosting at that point. You hadn't gotten to the hosting point yet. Okay. But that's like when we initially, you were like one of the, the few, the kind of the cronies that hung around at the fourth wall. So we like wanted to get in, like be friends with you and we were friends with Joe and all these, you know, just the people that were always hanging out there. That was like our spot to hang out in terms of open mics, you know, open mics are pretty dreary in terms of like, oh, there's not a good hangout anywhere. And that one at least seemed like, oh, this place just opened up. Uh, you know, it's like it could be our own. So mm-hmm. that's why at least initially it was like, oh, that's where we met. And then I think we grew on you. I think I think you were very much like a, uh, Ellen Doyle, who it took a while for us to like grow on her. I think I'm like that with everybody, to be you fair. Are, you are, yeah. Tough exterior, soft interior, yeah. Fuck you, I'm not soft. <laughs> uh, yeah, so it was during that that point. Um, but that that was the thing, it was like, that we were getting opportunities that we did not deserve because we were not ready for it yet. And because we were getting those opportunities and kind of squandering them, you know, all the other comics would be like, who the fuck are these guys? Oh, they're not even that funny. And they're hacky as fuck. Like, fuck you. So it'd be like, it'd be like, you ever bomb so bad that people don't look you in the eye? They look like they look through you or just past you. No. It was like, oh, <laughs> well. Of course I have, you fucker. Yeah. Yes. So it was like that all the time like if you if we ever went to the comedy store you know there'd be every you know a couple people would be like nice but everybody else is just like oof. but now it's like nice because we've actually found our we're comfortable which was the hardest part of doing it what was the meanest thing tony hinchcliffe ever said to you tony never said i don't think tony ever said anything mean it was usually the judges or like Like, what was the meanest thing said to you on kill tony (sighs) fuck um Dude, we had one bomb that was so bad that I like legitimately have repressed it. Um, and I, 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 I remember it was Jeff Danis. He was a judge of uh, Danish and O'Neill, and it was just such a bad bomb. And I felt even worse about it because I'm like, I chose the set list <laughs> for my brothers, and they're like, we probably shouldn't do that. I'm like, we're doing it, and then we did it, and it's just colossal bomb. So I think I repressed everything from there. Uh, I know Jezelnik said. Uh, He's like, this could work. Uh, never in comedy. <laughs> Do you guys know magic? That was funny. He asked you if you guys knew magic. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> uh, Have you ever shit on a comic? Have I ever shit yeah. on um, Like crushed their hopes or their spirit? Tried to? No, no. I don't think I've been like blatantly. I don't think I've ever done it. I'll like, I'll like joke with someone. I was like, yeah, you should probably quit. But it's like, if there any... I don't know. I've never been like, I've never been that like blunt. Like, just stop. Like, oof. Like, no. Because I've been there. Like, I've done it. Like, I mean, you, you bomb that hard a couple times. You're like, oh, yeah, okay. I feel bad for them. There's some people that deserve it. There's some people that need that because they don't get the hint. But that's also like, you know, if they're if you're at that point, and you have to tell other people. It's like you shouldn't be worrying about that. You should be worrying about your own stuff. Okay. Like, why do you have to? So you guys come home from a hard set, okay? It, it can be any any set. You guys come home from a hard set. What's the first conversation? Do, do you guys get angry with each other? Do you guys um? Do you guys nowadays blame, blame each other? Do you? How do you guys do it? How do you guys handle bombs as a unit? But nowadays it's like nowadays we. I mean, if it's an actual shit, like if it's, if we bomb an open mic, it's like all right, well. Either that's that it's kind of like a group thing where it's like it's on us for not rehearsing more beforehand or even at all. Um, <laughs> if it's at a show, then it's like 
we we like we we'll legitimately we tape all our sets and then we watch like just like football you watch film so we would we'll watch film and be like you should have done that uh, now who, you, who says that we all do we all have input on it so we all are like oh you know you went to the audience too much like you don't need to like continue to address the heckler like it's things like that where it's like we just need to like verbalize it and just get in a routine of saying that so it's 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 now it's like very much team initially when we did it it was like very cutthroat but it was also because we were so scripted okay. so it's like all right if somebody missed a line it's like well we were so scripted and so uncomfortable that it was like, oh, if you miss a line, we're just go off the rails completely. I, I feel like it is in some respects a band, but mm-hmm. the weird thing is, is like, there's disharmony in a band. Yeah. Where does the most disharmony come from? For us, in terms of, um, disharmony. I don't. From us, it would probably be just like, you know, there's a level of trust in in that you have to have in a band, right? So it's like, oh, okay. I trust that, you know, uh, you know, I, I trust that Mick Jagger is working on lyrics, right? It's like we have a big show in a month. I trust that Mick Jagger is going to be working on lyrics for that show, right, hypothetically. So who is your Mick Jagger? We all have to be. We all have to be like, all right, I know if we have the day off, it's like, oh, you're working. I know you're working towards something, whether it's like, and we each have different skill sets that we're better at. I mean. What are they? Um, Alex is, Alex is good, great at writing. Um, I'm kind of like all around, I guess like all around ideas or like, Hey, we should be, you know, focusing on building content, things like that. Sean's good at like a lot of the back end stuff, like editing, which is shit that I don't want to do. Uh, but it's very important and we kind of need it. Um, things like that. And like, you know, I think you mentioned it the other day where it's like, so like I'm even doing stand up, we have better, like better roles. Like, Sean is much better at tagging jokes because you don't expect it from him. And I'm better at like just setting things up. And then like kind of Alex is good at just like being the wild card and just like, oh, you don't know what he's saying. Or like, that's so stupid that like it evokes something out of me. So I don't know. Everybody, everybody has to be able to play all the instruments, but obviously somebody's better at an instrument than others. Yeah. What's the weakness in the Verzi triplet act? The weakness is mm-hmm. us. It's always on yourself. Like it's always what the what aspect? Um, I think that I think that I don't think we're we're not bad writers, we're nothing like that. Like we're comfortable on stage now, so it's like, oh, okay, you have no excuse really. Like because we have something that it grabs attention. We're triplets, right? That usually will grab attention. So it's like, okay, and you've tried these jokes. So it's like, if you can get their attention and have good jokes, the only flaw that can potentially happen is execution, right? So it's like, okay, if we don't just deliver, we're just not being ourselves. We're not like... Mitchell, mm. what is the flaw <laughs> in the, the triplet act? I mean, the flaw is that we're a group and you just have to maintain, you have to always be like strapped. Okay. So it's like, I guess preparation would be the, the biggest flaw for us. Okay, if we're not prepared, then it looks like, you know, a burning train car going down a <laughs> going down a mountain road. Like that's what it looks like when we when we're not together, it looks it, it's like terrifying. Where it's like, "Oh my god, these guys all three, all three of these adults don't realize that they don't <laughs> sound very good right so now." So, do you guys prep enough? Um, it depends. I think it does depend, like, because there's times where it's like, you know what? Sometimes it is better for us to just be, you know what? Let's see where it goes. Sometimes it is like, dude, it can be, you, you've done those bars. Like, if you do a random bar show where it's like, you know what? Fuck it. Let's see what happens. Because that's where it's like, okay, if there's nothing that really matters in that show, let's go balls to the wall, see if anything sticks. And then it's like, okay, let's use that on a show that, like, is really important to us. Yeah. We, it's like, you need that experimental phase. Like, obviously, if we're doing, like, a show in front of a club, we're doing our tried and true, our bangers, or things like that. But in our set, like, we are, we allow room to riff. Like, we know where the tags are, and then it's like, okay, there's still room here. If you wanted to throw another tag in there, try it out, because it's, like, it's the end of the tag. So it's like, if you want to throw one more in there, cool. If not, we're moving on. So we try to leave it flexible, because, again, when we started out, it was all scripted. It was like, oh, like, nobody likes that. It's like, oh, hi, I'm Jerry. I'm Marilyn. You know, it's just... 
mm-hmm. it's it's like it's not real. So you do. I mean, yeah, it's like the the preparation needs to be <laughs> needs to be there because if it's not, then it's like oh, we don't look real on stage. Like if we're not prepared, we look like three guys that just don't know what they're doing. They look like lost at a bar. It's like if you don't know what you're saying when you like go up and talk to a girl, like if you don't have a pickup line, it's like oh, you just look stupid. Like. Oh, uh, hi. It's it's funny though cuz I I've, I've seen you guys get mad at each other. That's why it's Well, of course we're brothers, dude. That, mm-hmm. And that's the other thing is like That's what I we're I'm, I'm brothers. talking about is it's it's not a band per se cuz you know, I don't obviously know all the ins and outs of Paul McCartney and John John Lennon and I can't believe I'm saying Versi triplets and <laughs> Paul McCartney and John Lennon. No. Um but you know, I can well, that's why we. I, I can guarantee that Paul McCartney never told John Lennon uh, because he's fucking lazy. That's <laughs> yeah, but but that thing is like because we're brothers. It's like we can be so cutthroat with each other when we need to, or I guess when we want to. But it's also like, dude, at the end of the day, we're family. Like, it, I, it, it's want to. Yeah. Well, sometimes <laughs> it's want to. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, yeah. How else am I going to get through to you, man? It's like if you're doing a business. And someone's not pulling their weight, you could fire them. Mm-hmm. But we're we're a group, but we're brothers, so it's like, well, we, we're gonna fire them. All right, you're out of the triple act. We'll we'll put a casting out for another <laughs> another guy. It's like, no, you can't do that. It's like, all right, well, we just need to be real with each other. So, let me ask you for you, sure. and I'm like, I get tired of fucking hearing triplet jokes. That's fair. I have, do too. Have you? I mean, it's got to be fucking dead by now, right? Dude, that's why you've seen our set. We don't even do that many triple jokes. We do a couple. No, I mean, I'm not talking about the jokes that you guys do. I'm talking about when a comic comes up on stage. Oh, yeah. And and just yeah. fucking uses their whole... Triplets, triplets. Oh, yeah, triplets. It's like... What if you guys did the same... Like, what if you guys all big the same girl? <laughs> Whoa, no one's ever said that to us before. I say, or did, what is, what's the other one? Do all of your dicks look the same? Yeah, that's, those are the top two questions. Even from non-comics, like just people that are have never met us before. Those are always the number two questions, the top two questions we get. Yeah. What do you want out of this? What I want out of this? You, Mitchell. Ideally, to make a living, dude. I, that was the whole reason I started doing stand up is because I'm like, dude, I initially, going through college, I was like going to do finance. That was my, my thing. I'd done this finance. I'd, like the one class I did is like notorious for how awful it is. But if you pass and you do well, like you'll be legit in finance. It was like this quarter long project. You have to go through, you had to go through a company's like 10 year history, right? All of their, all of their, uh, papers from a 10 year history and then project the next five years. Oof. Yeah. It was awful. And it, they call it the hundred hour project, but it's like, it took, I, I think I spent like 150 hours on it and, uh, half the class dropped. <laughs> so we started with 40, ended with 21, I think, uh, which was great because I ended up getting a 10%. I got a 10% on the project. And <laughs> the, <laughs> the, what's funny about it is the teacher's like, if you, um, predi- you can write the write the number you think you're going to get on the project on the back. If you're within uh, 10% of it, I will add a percentage. But if you're not, I'm going to take away. So I actually got a 9% on the project because I guessed that I was going to get a 70% and I got a 10. So he actually docked another 1% and <laughs> gave me a 9%. But because half the class had dropped, I, uh, I was able to get a, uh, I got a D plus in the class because it was scaled. Like a certain amount of people had to fail. And I got like the D plus just because so many people dropped. So after wow. that, I, yeah, after that, I was like, dude, I just want to do something that makes me happy. Like something that I can at least, at least be satisfied in. And to even, even just like doing those open mics and bombing, I was like, you know what? At least I'm doing it myself. It's not like something that somebody else wanted me to do. So after that, I was like, yeah, fuck that. I don't know how people do it. And I think my brothers all kind of have the same, uh, rationale while they were going through college is like dude as soon as like the the cubicle started creeping up on us and it's like oh hey this is where you're gonna be for the next 25 years i'm like dude fuck that that's the last thing i wanted to be in there's been a, a joke about uh, sean <laughs> everybody's that has said like ah sean's the, the he's the middle one he's the he's the stepdad of the group yeah yeah um is it true like is he different than the two of you 
Um, I don't think he he is a little different. I, I think personality wise, we're all kind of similar. Like uh, if you like ex- amplify everything, then yes, you can tell the differences. But I think Sean's just the most stubborn. Like Sean, just like anytime I've ever told him something, he refuses to do it. And that's where the brotherly thing comes in. Where it's like if a brother te- if your brother tells you to do something, your immediate response is "fuck you." I'm doing the opposite. And that's the thing is like, dude, I told Sean, I'm like, hey, dude, you need to get some new clothes because your shirts have holes in them. And this has been three years now, and he just still doesn't get new shirts. And it's like, I'm not like, you're 27, bro. Like, you can get some, you have money to get. Uh, and that's the other thing is like, we're not like financially, we're not in dire straits. Like, it's like, you are just choosing not to do it. So it's like, <laughs> at one point, is it a fuck you to me? That you're just not even willing to consider my advice. What do you think? I want you to get new clothes because I'm duping you? This is like a long con I'm doing? It's like, no. I want you to look slightly better because we're trying to make it in a business where your appearance matters. But he thinks I'm like personally attacking him. Is like, oh, he just doesn't like my, he doesn't like my clothes. He doesn't like me. But it's like, no, that's not it. Would you say you get along better with Alex? Yeah, I, I probably do. But, I mean... It's not that I don't love Sean. I was gonna say it's it's a. I'm an only child, so I have no mm-hmm. no dog in the fight, yeah. so to speak. Um, so yeah, it's it's a different kind. I've never seen you guys hug. Oh, we don't. I've hug. never seen you guys say don't like even, affectionate things to each other. But I mean, that's just like that's just how our family is. Yeah, and like, I'm, I'm sure other people are like that too. Yeah. Like I said, I just don't have my all of my family lives in Colorado. Yeah. So, when I see them, it's always a hug. Hey, how have you been? Oh, good. Like, cause I yeah, it's a special occasion. When, okay, so you have another older brother, right? Yeah, Mike. Okay, Mike. When you go home and visit, do you hug Mike? No. The brothers, well, I will hug Michael if I'm trying to piss him off. That's the only reason why I'd hug him. But, like, even, even, like, even recently, like... What about like, your mom or your dad? I'll hug, yeah, I'll, I'll hug and kiss my mom. And then about, like, four years ago, my dad and I... Uh, got into hugging. We got the hugging up. Um, the it, quick bro hug, like yeah. And it's not. It's not just because like I love my dad and my dad loves me. It's not like I have daddy issues or anything yeah. like that. It's just like did he ever touch you? <laughs> no, no. But okay, let me answer this. Sure. If he did, would you tell me on this podcast? I'm pretty. I think I would. <laughs> he did not touch me. We got the belt a ton. We got our asses kicked. Did you really? Yeah. But but dude, how else do you do it? Like my mom, uh, my mom had four boys in fifteen months, which my dad only, my parents both only wanted two kids. Oh, they got fuck. four, so it's like, how else are you supposed to discipline four boys? Because yeah, we're the shit out of them, yeah, and we're hard, we're like stubborn to begin with. Like we're just hard headed. Uh, no, you guys may be stubborn, but you're, I think you're good kids. And that's the thing; we've always been good kids. But it's always because we had that authority. Our dad was more of an authoritarian. Where it's like we can mess with mom a little bit, but then it's like, oh. Dad comes back and I was like, oh, shit, all right, we got to be on our behavior, you know? Do you want to be a father? Yeah. Yeah. I, I do. Would you hate your kids? I wouldn't be, like, I think there's got to be, I mean, I'd spank them, that's for sure. But it's like, I'm not going to, like, knock some teeth out. Like, yeah, well. <laughs> you know? But it's like, it, it also depends. Like, it, like, I feel like daughters would react differently to getting spanked than sons. Because yeah. I feel like guys, the only way that we learn is through physical altercation. That's like the only way we learn. Mm-hmm. Where it's like if you burn your hand on the stove, it's like, oh, okay, I'm not going to do that again. Or like if you were, if you ever got in a fight in high school, it's like, oh, okay, yeah, I, I probably shouldn't be talking as much shit. And that's why I'm actually grateful for my dad because I feel like getting, getting the belt when we were younger prevented us from getting socked in the face when we were older. Who got the belt more? Oh, dude, it was pretty equal distribution, man. Really? Yeah. <laughs> there was one oh, day, I remember shit. specifically, man, there was one day where we were all fucking around in the hallway. Like, all of us. How old? Um, we were, we were f- at this point, we were 13 or 14. And, <laughs> dude, usually, like, my dad would give a warning, right? He would give me like, knock it off. That was always his warning. Did, so, how would he do it? Don't do it into the mic. Don't blow up my yeah. mic. But yeah. how would he do it? Can you do your dad? Yeah. Knock it off! Be like that. So we'd hear that from downstairs, like, all right. And, you know, we would usually play football in the hallway. We'd have, we, had, we always had even teams. So any sports, 
any basketball games or whatever, we always had even teams. So well, yeah, you guys could play fucking football in that house. That yeah. house is massive. Yeah, my dad's a contractor, so he remodeled the house. And uh, you know, it's nice being white. We get uh, we get a lot of privilege. So yep. Uh, <laughs> no, so we would play football in the hallway, and this time in particular, uh, this is when we were actually going through football. So we were like lifting, and like the walls were starting to get really beat up. So um, I, I remember specifically, I like jumped over like my brothers to try and like get in the end zone, which was like the end of the stairs. <laughs> and then my dad just came storming up the stairs, and most of my brothers scrammed. I ran immediately into the bathroom, locked it. Right, I locked the bathroom. And my other brothers had time to go, like, hide. And my dad, like, focused on me. He's like, Mitchell, get the fuck out of the bathroom. I'm like, no. <laughs> He's like, get the fuck out of the bathroom right now. And me being the dumbass that I am, I opened the door. And the only thing that he had was a dog leash. So I got hit with a dog leash. And then later that night, my brother Mike comes downstairs. And he's like, um, my dad goes, hey, who's the, one in the, uh, who's the one in the bathroom? And Mike's like, that was Mitchell. He's like... Wow, what an idiot. Why would he open the door? <laughs> that was my other question. Did your parents always, were they always able to differentiate between you, Sean, and Yeah. Uh, my mom especially. My mom always knew it. My dad every now and then would mix it up, but you could tell pretty quick. My mom is a twin. Yeah. And it's not until recently that, like, I've, I've mixed them. Like, I, I hate to say it because they might be listening, but... There was at least twice in this last visit they were here this last weekend that mm-hmm. I, I I mistook them. Dude, it happens. Yeah, and I was like, holy fuck! Like, and it's it's in converse. It's in conversing where you're like, oh shit. I mean, it, it, that's just how it is, my though. Mother. That's like they're identical. We have the same exact DNA. It's like that. I don't know if they are identical. Oh, they're not. They were they were born up. They're twins, obviously. Mm-hmm. But I, isn't there something that in order to be identical? You have to be identical. Fraternal is the one where you look different. Because if they're fraternal, then you're just an asshole. Yeah, they're identical. Okay, there you go. Um, I mean, that's just like, I don't know. I've always had that problem. Like, it's always been like getting mixed up. Like, I'll respond to all of my brother's names just out of habit. Because everybody would mess our names up. So if I heard Sean, I'd be like, yeah, what's up? Even though it's not for me. Uh, what's funny is one question I hear a lot in mics is, uh, yeah, I know, I know the Versi triple, I know him, but I just don't know which ones are which. Yeah, <laughs> like that one I'll, I'll hear That's, quite a bit. I feel like we get that all the time, like, which I don't mind because it's like people know us, which is great. It's like, oh, it's mm-hmm. a triple. Yeah, it's like, cool, yeah, absolutely. And it's like you also don't need to know us like that well individually. Like, I feel like you're not missing too much. Yeah, and unless we're hanging out like every week, it, it's like, how are you going to know somebody? That well. Yeah, I feel like I know you guys too well. Yeah. It's like, dude, it's like when you see somebody at an open mic, it's like you don't learn their name until you keep seeing them over and over again. Yeah. It's like, oh, there's no need for anybody to learn our names. If they want to, cool. If not, then it's like, oh, who cares? Mm-hmm. You, you're just going to... You can still be friendly and not know somebody, right? I, yeah. I mean... Like seeing your barista. You see him all the time. Oh, I don't know his name. Your barista. <laughs> yeah. We've compared you to the Beatles, now the barista. That's a, I feel like, yeah. That's more appropriate. We're somewhere in the middle, more towards the barista end. Yeah. <laughs> Had to even ourselves out. We overshot it with the Beatles. So, <laughs> you want to be that, I mean, where do you, I, I think I asked you this, but like, I want a, a more, I guess, solid answers. Where do you see Mitchell Verzi? Like, will you guys be a triplet act for, like, as long as the Three Stooges were together? How long were they together? Forever. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, I mean, if we get to a point where we can continue doing it, then why not keep doing it? Like, it's like, it's you know, you always wonder, like, as a stand-up, you see some of these old guys, and it's like, why are you still doing this? Like, leave some room. Like, you don't have to do clubs. Like, you've already made your money. You don't need to do it. It's like, well, I worked this hard to get here. So why not do it? It's fun. It's it, like if you can get to the point where you can get paid to do it, it's the funnest job in the world. So like, all right, if I can get paid to travel and tell jokes with my brothers, then why would I try to break that up? Like, would you ever try it again without your brothers? I mean, I'll still every now and then do an open mic without my brothers. I mean, w- without? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I've, I've never seen it. 
No, I, you haven't. No, I did it. I haven't done it for a while. The last one I did it was, was that was Luke. No, it was with Alex. Alex. Alex did it, yeah. No, there was another, there was one I did like um, this little while. I was working on a a poetry book. Yeah, I was working on a poetry book. And uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> I see your face. It, you know what's funny? And you, you see my face. It's because you guys create that. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's like my immediate dude. As a brother, it's like you guys I, like aren't allowed to hug. You're mm-hmm. not allowed. If you wanted to make a drama, yeah, that was about somebody getting cancer and like a real fucking Meryl Streep type shit, yeah, you would you would not be able to do it. <laughs> no, I don't think strictly so. because you have set up the parameters yeah. and like, oh well, I can't do it because my brothers my, will eat me alive. Dude, and that's the thing is like my instinct is like, all right, how do I get in front of getting made fun of? Or it's like if I'm doing something and then I can like make the jokes ahead of time, it prevents them from making the jokes uh, about me. <laughs> Let me ask you. Okay. Um, you have a, a lisp. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Do you <laughs> do you do you have to get out in front of that, or, or was that something like? Um, no. I honestly don't, I, dude. In high school, I never had it. I, I think it was from football. I got. I, There's a game. You didn't where have I, it in high school. No. Or you just weren't aware of it. I don't think I would. Nobody up until senior year had ever made me aware of it. No one. Like, and it never even was a problem. But there was a game in football where I got hit, and I think my like ever since then my jaw has been clicking. And I don't know if that's it or not, but I never had it before that game, as far as I knew. Did Unless ever, everybody I know is an asshole and never made me aware of it. Well, not even. Not necessarily an asshole. I mean. Yeah. No, I never. I never really noticed it. Sean, had, see, Sean, well, here's the thing. Sean had it when he was young. Sean went to a speech therapist, and he uh, took classes, I think, in first grade. So I feel like they would have addressed me since they were already getting him. So I just figured I never had one, I guess. I don't know. We also had braces. I don't know if that had anything to do with it. Like, they had to use an expander on our palates. Well, would you say that it, like, knocked your jaw forward, that hit? It's possible. Yeah. Because typically what... what happens with the lisp is that your tongue mm-hmm. instead of going like usually it goes either up to the soft palate for yeah. or up to the hard palate mm-hmm. or down to the soft palate yeah when when you what a lisp is is it goes right in the center in between the teeth because the tongue has nowhere else to go yeah so, so i don't know um I yeah. mean, which is funny because it very well could be because sean or, or alex don't you know what's funny is it. when I did Kill Tony, my solo episode, Joe Rogan was the um, was the judge, and we talked about this for fifteen minutes, and it was just as boring as it is now. <laughs> I don't have any good answer, and I'm too lazy to fix it. Is the thing? What, what would you ever see a doctor about it, dude? I, I just feel like that would be like the saddest thing as a as a twenty seven year old adult to like do those exercises. You know, all right. Sally, so like, <laughs> dude, I do not want to spend an hour of my day <laughs> reciting, you know, Morgan Fre- or reciting Morgan Fre- riddles to James. Some- James Earl Jones has like a terrible stutter. Okay, well, yeah, he's also making millions of dollars. Yeah, so. because he does because he makes it off of his he makes it off his voice, dude. I'm not at that point where, <laughs> dude. If, I, it, I, if it got to a point, if there was a job, if it was like, hey, you guys are great. We love the triplets. We want you guys to have this show. Um, the only thing you need to do is you got to get that one with a lisp. You got to make him fix it, right? If it got to that, then yeah, I'll take lessons. It's actually kind of a unique thing. It's kind of cool with with the act. Wow, yeah, it's that cool rugged lisp that every man wants. Right? See, defense mechanism. Of course, dude. Exactly. I told you, I got to get trying to get ahead of yeah. it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, and dude, that's the thing. Is like we. <laughs> that's the thing. Is like, do you feel naked right now? No, I don't care. I know I have it. Uh, <laughs> No, the thing is, like, we're identical triplets. We go on stage together, but it's like we have differences. Like, we're the same but different. Like, we make that's that's what we use to make fun of ourselves. So it's like, all right, if if, if it's another like thing that we can make fun of, cool. I don't care. I make fun of my brothers for terrible shit. Like Sean's hair, Sean's hair is going so fast. Like it's like he, you and him have the same forehead. And do you think he's self conscious about it? He should be. <laughs> no, I. Uh, 
I don't think he is because I've dude. I like see though again. You set up the rocky waters that you <laughs> yourself have to serve. I know right? that's what gets me about you fucking verses. Yeah. It's like here, it's like yeah, it's like tying the cinder blocks on somebody before they drown, and then it's, it's like oh, yeah. I got mine. Don't worry, I'll be jumping in there and soon. You're like, well, okay, I guess I got to put these on. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did, but that's like one of those things where it's like I've been telling him for years. Like, all right, dude, uh, they have hair drops, they got pills, and like Joey Ranch recommended stuff that worked for him. And I like took that stuff, and I don't know if it worked, but I'm like, Sean, have you been using the drops? Ah, no, I still haven't. It's like, dude, it's been like six months now, where it's like, all right, you're just not, you're just not using the drops, so we have to make fun of you for it because you're not even making an effort, bro. So, uh, yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind. Uh, What's Alex's flaw? <sighs> fuck, ego probably. So it's not visible. It's not visible. Yeah, it's 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 a, it's a character flaw. That's <laughs> what it is. Uh, narcissism, but he's just like he's a goofball. So it's like, you know, he's an at like he's a sarcastic asshole and a little narcissistic. But we all have a little bit in that. It's, it's just like he does it more than most, and sometimes he's not aware of it. But that's another thing you can make fun of. Like we were, me and you went to a diner last night, and we were talking about it, and Alex didn't even realize that he had turned the conversation to himself, <laughs> even though he had nothing to do with the conversation. I'm like, wow, I'll wait to really uh, turn that story, make it about you. He's just like, what, what? And then, but he laughs about it. Like any little thing that's wrong with us, we just make fun of. I it, feel like that's how it is with like, it's like, dude, that's how it should be. Like, I don't know, we, we come from an Italian family, so it's like ball busting is like our way of showing affection. And if you don't, like if you're not with the jokes, then it's like, I don't want to hang out with you. Like if you just get offended all the time, it's like, oh, wow, cool. This can be a great family dinner. Like, I just don't, <laughs> it's like, if you can't take a joke, why? You just don't want to have fun. No. One of the reasons I, I wanted to have you on first is because you are like they've they've openly said to you he's a beta bitch he's such a beta <laughs> he's a beta yeah. and in my head I'm like what what does he have to say about it? I mean what is the real Mitchell Verzi it's it's just like another one of those things where it's like after a while you just don't hear it it you, you just forget about it like. You know how, like, if you go to, uh, if you're, like, in war, and you just, like, hear that noise all the time, that, like, it's like, oh, yeah, no, that's just, it's just there. Like, you just move on. You go about your day. Do you it's, think like tinnit- it's like tinnitus. That's what it's like. <laughs> Everyone brothers. Tinnitus in the ear all the time. <laughs> do you, do you think there's any truth in it? Some parts, yeah. I, I would, be, I would say I'm the most sensitive of my brothers. But that's, I'd say that's more of a good thing, where it's like I'm, I'm more like empathetic. <laughs> where that's, it's like, that's not anywhere else, that's a good trait to have. <laughs> but with brothers, that, apparently, you're just that's, a, that's what kills you're a sissy me, boy. Bro. That's what fucking yeah. kills me. Is like, I'll be when there was like three of you, I was like, all right, the middle one, because I was, I don't know why, but I always equate you as the middle one. Yeah. What's the actual birth? Sean, Alex, or sorry, Alex, Sean, me. I'm the youngest. Alex, Sean, and then you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, that makes sense too, because in a way you're you're the baby of the three. Yeah. So naturally, the baby is kind of the babied, but you were all born like within minutes. <laughs> yeah, but it's also like I feel like my brothers, like, dude, they didn't move out. They'd never been outside of the house until we just moved out. Like, I at least went away to school. I like tried to, you know, experience different things. So it's like, okay, I just think that they just have been in their own bubble for most of their life, and I, now they're out here. And it's like, oh, okay, there's definitely some lessons to learn. I will say this. You are you are definitely the less stubborn one. Yeah, I'm, I'm much more open. Which is why I was like, oh, he might be the gay one. Like, <laughs> when, when I saw... Dude, and they, and they always thought that too, man. They, I, like, my Did name... They really? I don't think it was, dude. Not I was, always, but like, was there ever a time where they're like, he might be queer? Um, dude, <laughs> it was like, in, it was in like the dumb brother ways that people think. Like, if you have a brother, like, dude, I grew my hair out, right? I grew my hair out, and they're like, oh, gay. <laughs> what a gay boy over here. He's got long hair. Gay. And I was like, I, I grew it out because a girl that I liked liked it. That Like, it was yeah. the most ungay reason why. But. Apparently, and gay is like a terrible thing, right? Yeah, well, with brothers, yeah. Well, I, I also okay. I will say, I also did have a diary, and that did not help. Yeah, you had a diary. Yeah, they found it. 
No. If I called it anything else other than a diary, it would have been fine. But I literally titled each page Dear Diary, which was my mistake. If I would like even named it like, hey, Jim, uh, today my day was good. No, I named it Diary, dude. <laughs> so, yeah. How many entries were in there? Not a lot. But it was like, dude, I like this girl a lot. Um, I was going through puberty. I didn't know. Like, I, I couldn't talk to my brothers because they would make fun of me. So I was like, I don't know who to talk to. So I just like wrote out any anxiety that I had. And then it just got a thousand times worse when my brothers found my diary. This was like when I was like, I was 12. Dude, too, this so. is awful. Oh, yeah. No, it was mortifying shit. Yeah. But it's good, though, because like, I don't know. It's like, if I can go through that, this is like, oh, dude, nothing. Dude, Bombing not is kidding. not that bad. I'm getting chills of like when people were finding out I was gay. Like, that's, yeah. and you're not gay. It's no. not, you're, it's, 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 it's a just, diary. It's like, yeah. It's like the same level of like, I don't know, it's a secret. And then when somebody finds out, it's like, oh, like, you just know it's, you know, the level of cringe that's coming afterwards. It's, it's fascinating though, because I, I, I feel like now I'm kind of getting a sense of this. Yeah. By the way, you're, you're fantastic at reading people. Just want to make that clear. Like you like know how to dissect people and their actions so well. Um so, I think I'm I'm starting to get this now. The picture's yeah. a little I, I think what I, I like about you in particular is My calves. You, you can get called the beta. Yeah. And you're okay with that. Dude. In in the sense where it's like, okay, like I, I would venture a guess that you would pull more pussy with that. Um, I'm pretty sure Alex probably does. I, but Alex Alex gets laid more, but it's like it's it's all like, you know, it's not it's nothing that's going to be like long term. Like it's not satisfying. You know, it's like oh okay, you can have one night stands. That's cool. But like yeah. if you're like Alex, are you ever going to have somebody that you can just confide all of your true deep dark secrets and like talk to and trust and depend on? Nah, probably not. It's you know, it's, you know, though, like, you guys are completely different when you're by yourselves. Yeah, and it is the funniest fucking thing. Like shooting pool with you. If it's just you and me, and we're we're shooting pool, uh -huh. I'm okay with losing. Well, you know, I, you know, I'm better than them. Them that. Oh my god. Yeah. Fucking lose. Yeah, you're much better than they yeah. are. So I was like, you're okay with losing to me, but if you lose to Sean, you, I know it makes you so oh, angry. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because he's you know not good to, enough. Yeah. That's where I'm like. I know that that was my loss. Yeah. And Alex, you treat, if you lose to one of them, you treat them like it's one of your brothers. Well, and it's, it's weird though. Cause I've played with Alex before and we've been able to talk about other shit. Mm. There's something that's very weird though. Yeah. In terms of the nucleus mm. that when you three get together, it's, it's almost like, okay, it's, it's a show. It's its own show. Mm. And I'm not saying that you guys are, are trying to put, you hear that NBC. On. It's it's not that you guys are trying to put something on that's a, a facade, but mm. you guys are... De there's definitely walls that get put up. And well, it's we're definitely go to... Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Like... Yeah, we gotta be on our game. Yeah. It's like a... It's a fire alarm. And what's so funny is like, I've been hang Like, I've hung out with the three of you and it's... No. I don't get used to it. Like, I would compare it to this. When I bombed at the comedy store, it was coming back from Lake Havasu. Yeah, because I thought, all right, oh good, then I feel comfortable. I feel comfortable, <laughs> and then I walked into the OR and it fucking handed me my soul, like yeah. crumpled up. Yeah. With you guys, it's like, oh, I've been hanging out with uh, with Sean all day. It's been really nut. And then to get you all three together, it's just like, well, fuck. All I said was that I really like the Rolling Stones. Yeah, yeah. And you're like, oh, who the fuck will listen to that? Oh, queer, like. <laughs> But I mean, at least when it's like that, I like usually stand back. I usually let them talk it out, and then I'll like jab in every now and then. Is that how you? Yeah, actually, you you do do that. Yeah, because I, I don't know. Well, yeah, I think what it is is it's like, the empathy, dude. Is what I'm telling you. It's we like, talked about it. you're you're okay with with, and I don't want to call it beta because they say it in <laughs> such a a hateful. I hope everybody slides in my DM and says. Fucking beta Mitch or Mitch you're, the bitch. You're a beta. Yeah. Yeah, Mitch the bitch. That like, was the I, name I got for years, dude. Of course. Of course you did. Yeah. But like if one of the verses were to fucking get hit by a car, I feel like you would be there. Then we like, go. You right, would be the first one. Right there. back to America's Got Talent is where we go. Then we got a story. We can actually get on the show. Um Yeah, yeah, obviously. It's like real shit. 
It's like, dude, we can bust balls forever, but it's like, okay, when something actually happens, it's like, all right, real life kicks in. What's the most emotional exchange you've ever had with Sean? And what's the most emotional exchange you've ever had with Alex? Hmm. It had to be during, like, emotional. When you were gone, I bet. When I went away to school, I confided in Alex and, like, a lot of things. Because I was like, dude, it was the first time I'd ever been away from my, uh, from anybody. I had, like, been away from my family. So I was like, I was, you know, on my own. So I was like, yeah, you know, I confided a lot of things in Alex. Uh, definitely didn't have a diary. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, but dude, at that point I was just like, it's just like figuring things out. So like from, from it's fucking lonely, isn't it? Dude, it was so lonely. And I was just like, I've always had like that, you know, what's nice is like being triplets. Like I've always had that like, Oh, it's a triplet. Like it's always been the icebreaker, but it's like when you're on your own, it's like, Oh, uh, Look, how do I world do? We were talking you. about Daniel day Lewis in uh, in there will be blood. Or it's like he's talking how he like thinks that other people talk or like like to hear it. I was like a little bit like that where I'm like, oh uh, hey oh hello like <laughs> I had to figure out how to like break the ice, which I was never good at. Um, but that was just like part of. What learning. would you What would you tell like? Talk me through what a conversation with. Alex would be like when you needed like what were you getting from him were you getting like well comfort yeah well I used to have a lot more anxiety like I had so much more anxiety going through college and like it was just like dude I, don't, I just don't know I was like all right yeah I guess it was comfort but it was also just like I didn't know like where this anxiety was coming from and it was mainly just from like school and like you know how it is where it's like if you go to college it's like oh my god my whole life is like coming before my I have like two years to figure everything out it's like it's like life shit like that where I'm just like I, I don't know what I want to do and I feel like I'm getting I'm getting pigeonholed into this life I didn't want which was whatever finance at the time and then ultimately like dude after that project I was just like oh this actually doesn't matter and it was just like a huge like mental break for me where it was like oh okay I can I, like it it's like you can fail and be fine. You know, you'll find something else, which was nice. What did Alex say? What I mean, what did he do that comforted you? Um, I think he was kind of maybe going through the same thing at that time. Because we all kind of had the same moment where we're like, dude, this fight, like, I don't want to do this. Like, I don't want to be like a cog in a system and just like do a job my whole life. Like, and he kind of had that too. And I, it might have helped that we were like, we knew we would ha- we could have some success because we were we acted as kids. We did a bunch of commercials, and that money ended up paying for college. So it was like, all right, well, we've had sec- success before. So it's like, at least if we give it a try, maybe we could, you know, make something happen afterwards. Yeah, so that's what I was like. All right, we use college to uh, kind of get the weaknesses out, and then it's like, okay, after college, it's like, all right, we had some success. Let's keep going. See how this goes. Yeah. So I don't know. It wasn't like. It's like we already had like a good trial run of it, so let's try it again and see where what happens. So, I mean, that's you, just that's, that phone call never went to Sean, though, did it? Uh, not really. But it was they were always like I would do it on speakerphone or like Skype calls. Okay. Like we used to Skype call each other. We'd do group Skype calls to like write when we were writing our first script, which was a steaming pile of shit, by the way. Just awful, like some of the worst, heinous shit that we thought was hilarious. Yeah. We just knew nothing about script writing. And we're like, oh, this is a TV show that's going to pick us up. Like, you know, it'll, you know. And we knew my aunt was dating like a big time executive producer at the time. Like, he's won Oscars. Yeah. And we're like, oh, dude, what we're going to do is we're going to print the script out. We're going to go to his house because we've been there for Thanksgiving. And we're just going to leave it in his mailbox. And uh, he'll pick it up probably and, and we'll get rich. That was what we thought. And thank God my mom said, no, you're not going to go over there and drop the script up at his house because that's, you know, invasion of privacy. Um, so we sent it to his office at, uh, well, his his Hollywood office, and it immediately got sent back. The assistant's really? just like, oh, he doesn't take unsolicited scripts, which, thank God, because it was horrendous, and we needed to, like, figure out what it actually was, yeah. which was just, like, mildly racist jokes. Okay. So what was the... Um, what was the... Uh <laughs> closest you ever got with Sean? Um, closest I ever got with Sean? Um, probably during football. When we went to high school, that's like when we were the closest probably because we were both on the team together. Alex had tore his ACL, so we were like hanging out more. 
But I mean, we're all like, I'm close with all of my brothers. Like, yeah. we're all like but tight. The question I asked was emotional connection moment. Like, what was the closest moment you had with Sean? Mm, I don't know. That's one of those things where it's like, I don't, I don't even think about like the most emotional moment I've had with like any of my brothers. I haven't had a lot of emotional moments where it's like, oh, come here. Well, it's interesting because you were able to name but, at least but, something with Alex. But that was like, yeah, but I did that with both of my brothers. Like I, I vented both of like my anxiety to both of them. So it was like, all right. And that was just like a general thing. With Sean, I don't know. I, I'm probably I, like in terms of venting stuff with that, I'm better talking with Alex and Sean. Yeah. And that's just like, I don't know. That's how it's been. It's something like no knock on Sean or anything. I'm not trying to break up the band here. I say I'm trying to find Yoko. <laughs> uh, yeah. Dude, the script we wrote was so bad. I can't imagine. Dude, it was it was bad, man. We tried doing... I mean, the concept was decent. It was like my oldest brother was like a, uh, a, a computer millionaire. He like made his money uh, creating a virus that he used <laughs> to infect things. So he was like filthy rich and then like we all lived under him. Like we're like, oh, hey, you're filthy rich. Can we like live with you and you can make us do whatever you want? And then it was like always just like weird. Okay. We <laughs> That's all I had. Uh, what's the meanest Netflix, thing? you want to pick it up? What's the meanest thing you've ever done to Alex or the meanest thing you've ever done to Sean? Mm. Or how about this? What's the meanest thing you ever said to Alex? I don't know. Um, I don't know. It's stuff that would be like... The thing with Alex, if I said anything mean about him, he would just immediately not think it was talking... He would think I was talking about somebody else. You guys have never really like crossed each other's line? No. Sean, maybe. When we were in, uh, in high school, I knew Sean's password to his email, and we um, figured out his MySpace... And we like knew, so we would like go through all of his shit. We talk about it in stand up actually. Um, so I knew like all of his. Uh, I was reading all his messages and stuff. And then when he found that out, we did that for like a year. So when he Jesus found that out, yeah. Christ. I used to pick on Alex when he tore his ACL. We would fuck with him pretty bad because he he didn't get surgery on it right away because the doctor's like, hey, you might still grow, which was a cruel joke because we didn't grow any taller after that. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, we would fuck with Alex a lot because he couldn't walk. And he had a shower with a trash bag on when he got a surgery because he didn't want it to get wet. Yeah, it's, it's, I don't know. You guys, I, it all I will together, say this, dude. the one thing that. There's like so much stuff that's like. I, the, I, the one thing about you blur. guys that I respect is you, not you so much. Mm. You've, you've annoyed the shit out of me before. Um, Alex <laughs> has fucking sent me. Yeah. He's sent me on other galaxies. Like I could fucking, I could punt this motherfucker to the moon. Yeah. Um, Sean's done kind of the same. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Like my brothers will intentionally like we the conversation will be totally fine, and my brothers will out of nowhere just intentionally ruin it with some awful comment. It, it just like it's like the stuff that sucks the wind out of the out of the room. Like it, it happened last night too at the diner, and I'm just like, "Oh my god, Jesus!" I literally and like, got you up and walked away. Yeah, yeah, and but it's like it's like they can do that because you we know, like I we all know that you love us, so it's like it, it's just like that brotherly thing where it's like you wouldn't do it, they wouldn't do it unless they knew they felt comfortable and liked you. It's like a way, dude. It's weird that our family like well, our way of showing affection is pissing each other off. So like I just, <laughs> yeah, I just do it for my. It's like I just do it for fun. I, I, I do have, it because it makes you angry. That's the number talked, one thing. I've talked to Luke Allen and I've been like, dude, I I don't think I can be friends. I don't think I can be friends with them. And I go, they fuck. It. Like, I'll name one of them. Like, Alex is fuck. He's on my last fucking nerve, dude. <laughs> I can't. I can't fucking do it. Yeah. I can't fucking do it. And then he'll do and something Luke, that. Luke will be like, Jesus, you're really pissed off with this guy. And I'm like, dude, it's fucking. I, I can't. I think it's done, man. I think it's done. Yeah. But and then he'll do something that makes you like him again. Yeah, and then I'm like, oh wait, no, I I I love this guy. He's he's wonderful. He's a good friend. I feel like Luke is that same way too, though. Where Luke is like, if you don't know Luke well enough, he'll like tell jokes, and then it's like, 
dude, it's like that same like cringeworthy, and he'll just like laugh about it. <laughs> here's here's the thing that like okay, <laughs> but Luke is funny enough to get back. I gotta get this back to you. Okay, I can say pretty much anything mm. to you guys in in fucking anger, yeah, in hate, and I know whatever I say to you guys, you will never ever ever hold a grudge. Oh yeah, and I never came from that though. Yeah. Like, if, if I told a cousin, I was like, fuck you, you know what, you stupid son of a bitch, I read your diary. Yeah. They would never talk to me again. Really? Oh, dude, the Roaches are, fu- we're, we're champion grudge holders. Oh, wow. Like, we don't fucking, yeah, there's members of my family that don't fucking talk for fucking years. Like, Dude, that's what my mom is. Really? Yeah. See, so where, is that like a trait from your dad's side of them then? I think it's just a brother thing. It's trial by fire. Wow. My dad, my dad, oh, every now and then old grudges, but it's like nothing that like ends the communicate. Like I don't know. For us, it's like on on a regular. Like I've got like at least two people that I'm not talking to. Really? <laughs> oh fuck yeah! I mean, dude, I've had things. I think with- it's just how I I I think that's a Rocha thing too. Okay. It might be like a, a stubborn Mexican or Rocha thing, whatever you want to call it. It might be, dude. Because there, there's definitely parts of my the Italian side of our family that is like that. That it's like, yeah, okay, we're fucking done. It's between the brothers, K. Yeah, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Fredo, no. Uh, but I don't know. For us, it's like, dude, th- you know, we're all human. Like, if you make a mistake, it's like I can. All right, unless you do like some colossal fuck up, it's like. And even then, though, like I would have to murder one of you, Verzi. You would have to, you would have to sig- like betray our trust so fucking much for me to be. And I, I told you the other day, I'm like, I have, I have rarely been angry. Like, I don't, yeah. think, I can't remember the last time I was angry in the past like five years, other it's, than bombing horrifically. But it's that's one, one of those traits about you guys, though, that I hate and I <laughs> admire so much. Yeah. With Luke, it's Luke. It's a little different. Like, you Luke? know, not to. Not to knock you guys, I'm. I feel closer to Luke. Yeah, Luke is, and I. It's funny because like I don't. You guys are like yin and yang. It's a weird thing yeah. with with Luke Allen because I'm like, if, if there's like a brother that I have in comedy, I would think it would be Luke just because he can yeah. say anything. Yeah, like legitimately anything to me, and piss me off. Like yeah. he hates so much of what I love. Mm-hmm. Which by definition means I have to hate anything that he brings up out of love. Yeah, and and that's exactly how we are, dude. Yeah, where it's like you just it's just something you do just to like annoy each other, and, but because it's fun, it, it keeps yeah. it exciting. The thing of it though is, is like I don't even remember what day it was. Luke had me so fucking angry, and I I would I didn't even want to look at him, yeah. much less talk to him. And he was he was like one of those fucking like. I don't know what was going on. I was like, I'll walk home. And he's like, oh, let give you, let me give you a ride. Dude, Jesus I was there. Christ. I was there the one day. If it's a yeah, joke, I, like, I think fuck of. you. I'm not, I'm fucking walking home. I don't want to fucking be in a car with you. And it, he was literally like, it was like a Bronx tale. Like Marie, get in the fucking car. Like, yeah. It was like one of those things. And I was like, I don't want to fucking be in a car with you. You fucking piss me off. Yeah. And we get in the car and he's like, Hey, listen, the Rolling Stones are playing. <laughs> oh boy. This is good. Isn't it? Don't you just love this? <laughs> and he's just and I'm not saying anything. I'm like I'm not I'm not fucking laughing, Luke. He's like showing that he cares you, about you. <laughs> you pissed me the fuck <laughs> off. Like I don't want to talk to you. Yeah. And Luke looks at you guys and he's like, Hey guys, more like driving Miss Lazy, huh? Oh, dude. One of the funniest lines I've ever heard. I mean Because you cracked. That was even oh, yeah, better. dude. I couldn't stop yeah. laughing. Dude, and that's what Luke's great at is like no matter how much you want to hate him, he's so fucking funny that like he can get out of it. It's it's insane because this is the weird thing. I I feel like I I I feel like I have to explain him to people. Yeah. Well, dude, it's like if you don't spend enough time with him to get that like a like there's some people that just grow on you and he's definitely one of those. So it's like if you only get him in short doses, you're like what the fuck is wrong with this guy? Oh yeah. But it's like if you can get him like a couple times and like hang out. Like dude, the reason we became friends with Luke is cuz you were there. It was at their fourth wall. You were there, and you were like the mutual friend, and we like spent two hours talking. It's like okay, that was enough time for us to understand Luke, and that was the thing of it. Like I feel consistently with him that, and it's an annoying type of thing. Like, no, no, like you're gonna like this guy. He's a good fella. 
Yeah. <laughs> He's one of us. Yeah. But he like it's it's weird because with him it's a different kind of thing where I'm like, okay, I feel like he is a legitimate fucking genius in the sense of like Oh yeah, he is. I've never seen somebody that quick. Yeah. Never. There was one person It makes me angry. It it is. It's infuriating. It's like it's like Dude, it's like why even talk? Because I know he's gonna <laughs> he's gonna have a, be- a joke that's ten times better than anything I have to say. So I'm just gonna lay it quiet and watch and learn. And, and that that is one thing that I will say to you guys is when when it's Luke when it's Luke Allen and the Verzi triplets, I can sit back. Yeah, I sit back and I'm just like, all right, I'm gonna I'm just gonna be in in hog heaven here. Yeah. I don't have to work as hard. Yeah. Um. So you got anything to plug? Um, at Versi Triplets on Instagram, Twitter. Uh, we got our podcast called Protocol. Um, and that's about it for now. A couple shows coming up. Antelope Valley Comedy Festival. Uh, we're doing the New Faces show on September 8th. And then I think we have a couple other gigs in September. All that stuff's on our social media. Well, I, I think we're going to do Victorville soon, dude. I was going to ask you about the after the podcast. Yeah, for sure, dude. <laughs> yeah. Um, Thank you for uh, having me on Lake Havasu, man. That was, oh, dude, that thank was you for having me on here. Fun. Yeah, man. That was... Is, dude, but that's what it's all about. Like, I was just watching the comedians in cars getting coffee, and Eddie Murphy's like, dude, my favorite times were like going to the diner with three or four of the comics and just like making each other laugh. I'm like, yeah, that's the fucking best part about it. Like, oh, fuck yeah. That Lake Havasu trip was great because we were just doing comedy, getting paid for it, and... Dude, fucking that, around. That it was great. Den- like the next morning when we went to Denny's, <laughs> yeah, it was so fucking. It, it was amazing. Yeah. Like I, I haven't laughed that hard. But isn't that, <laughs> isn't that crazy though? That like even Eddie Murphy, who's like got all his money, done all this stuff, that's still like one of his fondest moments is like sitting in a diner with comics. It makes sense. No, I mean, it does. It's great. Yeah. All right, man. Well, thanks for being on the show, no buddy. No problem. Thank you for having me. I want to thank Mitchell for being on. I uh, I love the guy. I love the Verzies. Verzi Triplets on Twitter. Check them out. It's at Verzi Triplets. V-I-R-Z-I. So check them out. That's it for this week. We'll catch you guys next time. And thanks for listening. My music's rolling. I'm on to that kick and swing. And I put Zeppelin on. When I feel the blues. I put Zeppelin on when I feel the blues. Shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it, shake it.